Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and today we're going to look at a MIG welder. In some of my DIY videos, uh, we're working on Mustang, done some welding. I uh, didn't really talk a lot about the welder in the video, but I wanted to take time to talk a little bit more about a MIG welder, how it's used in auto body, and if you're looking to buy one or use one, some things to look for, and some things that you, you don't want in, in a MIG welder. Because I know there's a lot of welders out there that they sell the little kits. And, you know, some of those are not really that good for auto body. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, let's just kind of talk about the, the parts of a MIG welder. Uh, anytime you're going to do any welding, you know, it takes uh, two parts to make the full uh, circuit. And you've got your lead. And this is what you do the weld welding with. Whenever you start welding, you put this to the, uh, the surface that you're welding. When you're ready to start welding, you hit the trigger and the uh, wire automatically starts coming out and it makes the, the circuit, which uh, causes a short and that's what creates the weld. So this is your, your gun. This is your gun nozzle. This is what directs the gas to your weld. This is the gas that we use, which is 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide. We'll talk just a little bit more about that here in a minute. But without the nozzle, you know, this gas would escape and not uh, be directed towards the weld. So some important things about this is your welding. You can kind of look in here, and there's a little bit of slag right there. If you can see that. But as you're welding, that slag builds up. And if you notice that there's a bunch of slag in there and uh, clogging this, this nozzle, that's going to create a, 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 you know, restrict your gas from uh, hitting the weld as well. Now, if you don't have enough gas, it's going to cause some problems, some porosity. Uh, basically, it's just a weld that has a bunch of tiny little pinholes, and you're not going to have the full strength that you're supposed to. If you are welding and it looks real poppy, doesn't look like it's welding real smooth, uh, that's probably the cause. This could be clogged up, uh, you could be out of gas, or you know, wind will blow that away as well. If it's so windy, uh, if you have a fan blowing out it, at it, or like the other day I was welding outside, you know that can cause problems. These work best using them in a shop inside. But that's your nozzle, keep it clean. Another thing I didn't mention in the, the other video, is it got no nozzle gel. Before you start welding, you can stip, uh, stick the nozzle in that, and that uh, helps keep the splatter from getting built up in this nozzle. So the first weld, you probably want to use that. You know, just dip the whole thing in there, do a practice weld, you know, get some of that out, out of there, kind of leave a residue on there, and then start your welding. This is your tip, your contact tip. This is what feeds the wire. This has to match your wire size. Now most auto body uh, thinner metals is you're going to use .023 wire. You know that works best, what I found to work real good. So if you're going to uh, change that out, if you're going to go to 035 or something, there's a liner in here you'll have to change inside of this hose. You'll have to change your contact tip and the wire. And we'll talk about rollers inside the machine here in just a minute. But for welding, uh, I would recommend 023 for welding an auto body. If, you, if your wire gets welded to this tip, that'll cause a problem. Uh, this is probably the part that you're going to have to change the most. You know, always have a, quite a few extra tips. If you're having problems with it, take this off, put a new one on, and uh, start welding again. So you've got your nozzle, your contact tip, your liners inside of here, and this is your hose. The liner feeds the wire through and the hose feeds the gas through. And then to complete the circuit, we have the, uh, this is actually called a work clamp. Uh, you know, I've even referred to it as a ground because it does ground the surface, but actually, 
depending on what polarity you're welding. I mean, this could act as the ground, or it could, you know, it's vice versa. But anyway, this is a work clamp which completes the circuit. That has to be attached to metal somewhere. And you also want to make certain when welding on cars that you disconnect the battery. And if there's any electrical components within 12 inches, they really need to be removed to keep from damaging them. Now let's look inside the welder. Now I've talked about the settings. I'm not going to get in that so much today. I'm just going to kind of talk about the parts of the welder. Uh, you know, whenever you're welding the metal, you'll use this chart. Miller has the same thing, uh, you know, a chart to go by. And like I said, that's just kind of a, a, a starting point, and you can fine tune it to, you know, how you weld. This is your rollers in here. You know, if you change this wire out, you'll feed it through here. The wire comes through here, and then it feeds through this hose, through the liner, through the contact tip, to the work surface. Now, if you're going to change the wire size, you're also going to have to change this roller right here. That'll have to match. Now, let's talk about polarity just a little bit. I mentioned, I know there's a lot of welding machines out there that, you know, are for auto body. It says that it doesn't take any gas. You know, I really don't recommend those for doing auto body. They don't do a real good job. What that is, if it does not require gas, it's a flux core weld. You know, it's not this solid steel that we use. Uh, doesn't do near good as a job. I, I'm not going to say that it doesn't work. I mean, it will work, but uh, not really recommended for auto body. Uh, if you're going to use uh, gas, you know, I recommend using the 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide. You can use straight carbon dioxide. Uh, that'll work. It's certainly better than using uh, flux cord wire, but um, this, this works the best for auto body. But something I want to mention, if you have one that's set up for flux core, you know, it comes like that new, you're going to have to change the polarity before using this. On this one, you take these two wires off and you just switch them, the two main ones. On Miller, they have little metal clips that you, uh, you take one way, take them off, and you put them on the other way. Uh, Basically, I just want you to know about that. It'll be in your owner's manual, and it'll talk about polarity. Uh, whenever using this system with gas, you use a reverse polarity. Whenever you're using like a flux cord wire, it's going to be a straight. But you have to switch those around. Uh, if not, you know, that's going to, it's not going to work properly. That's probably the most important thing you need to know, because most welders do not come with a gas bottle. Now, the gas bottles, they can be purchased. Or you can rent them from an oxyacetylene dealer in your area. Now, anytime handling this, if we take this regulator off, this is what regulates it. If we take this off, we need to make, be, uh, make sure that we put this cap on there before we handle this. And if you're going to uh, store this bottle, make sure that you store it somewhere where it's chained up. You don't want the bottle falling over. So be, be sure to put the cap on anytime it's not on the machine and uh, secure it. Now this is the gauge here. The first one will tell you how much pressure is in the bottle. When it's full, you know, it's going to have higher pressure as you use. The gas, you know, it goes down. This right here is where you set how much you're using at the gun. And you have to set that when, with the uh, trigger pull. And generally around 20, uh, 20 pounds is about where you want it. Uh, yesterday I was welding outside where there's a little bit of wind. I cranked it up a little bit more. And this specific welder, you know, it's just a 110 welder, which makes it, uh, makes it work good for, like, like, I don't even have 220 here. So it's a lot more uh, handy that way. However, uh, not quite as consistent as a 220. If you have 220, you know, that's going to produce a better weld, but this, this does a good job. Now, I know there's a lot of different uh, welders out there. I'm not familiar with a lot of them. Uh, I'm real familiar with Lincoln and Miller, and I know a lot do a lot of DIY videos, and, and I, I use some with cheaper guns and more expensive, but welders are something that I probably want to, you know, stick with one of the name brands. I don't know them all, but Miller and Lincoln I know are good. 
Some of them out there, you buy them, and if, if something goes wrong, you can't get no one to work on them, or they can't find the parts. But uh, you can find a Lincoln or Miller dealer anywhere. You know, any every town has them. So uh, I would recommend sticking with one of those two, probably a little bit more than some of the others. And I would always use a gas system for doing auto body. So you're going to use a reverse polarity, polarity uh, 75 percent argon, 25 percent carbon dioxide, or you know, just carbon dioxide will work. But Anyway, that's the basic uh, parts of a welder as far as setting, setting it up. I mean, there's a lot of internal parts which I'm not going to get into. But uh, just wanted to kind of cover welding just to explain that a little bit deeper than I did in the uh, Mustang video. But anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.